Fox News Alert, new audio obtained by the Washington Post of President Trump on a call with Georgia election officials claiming that he won the 2020 election and threatening legal action. Let's take a listen to one of those clips. All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. But they are shredding ballots, in my opinion, based on what I've heard, and they are removing machinery, uh, and they're moving it as fast as they can, both of which are criminal fines, and you can't let it happen. And With that, let's bring back our panel, Associate Editor for Real Clear Politics, A.B. Stoddard, Fox News contributor Jessica Tarloff, and right in D.C. host and attorney Gail Trotter. Uh, A.B., start us off. Your reaction to the audio obtained by The Washington Post. Well, the accounts um, of, of the whole hour's worth of sound really show that the president um, has been told by people, I guess, around him, like Mark Meadows is also on the call, um, that there is, you know, fraud that needs to be looked into. So he has not read it in the paper. He's not seen it in a court docket. He's never actually been presented with evidence that Ravensburger has that he's hiding. But he's accusing Raffensperger of doing that. He, and then he says, of course, things like, in my opinion, machines are being shredded, so ballots are being shredded. So um, this, again, I, this is incredibly politically damaging to President Trump. He does not care one iota about that. But when we talk about Wednesday, when we talk about Republican lawmakers in the House and the Senate objecting to the certification of a free and fair, legitimate election um, with allegations of fraud and evidence of fraud they have not yet presented, uh, this phone call where the president is threatening a secretary of state who has counted the votes three times, um, a Republican who supported him, uh, is going to be very hard for them to defend. Jessica, your reaction to the audio. Uh, my reaction to the audio is the same that it was just a few uh, minutes ago. I'm absolutely gobsmacked and I'm further gobsmacked by the fact that we haven't heard from every single Republican coming forward with their tail between their legs saying we have now gone this is a bridge too far. Ted Cruz was on earlier this morning with Maria Bartiromo defending uh, this push to overturn the electoral college results asking for this 10 day audit for widespread voter fraud that no one has been able to prove. In court the Trump team has had one victory. The Democrats led by Mark Elias has 60 victories. No judge, even Trump appointees, wants to hear anything about this ridiculousness, the most ridiculous of all being Louis Gohmert's suit, which got knocked down, I think, in like 30 seconds. Um, it's terrible for Georgia. It puts Kelly Leffler and David Perdue in a bad position. But most of all, it's terrible for America. He should concede. He should walk out that door on January 20th. I don't think Joe Biden cares if he attends the inauguration or not. And hopefully we can put this very dark period behind us and all of these Republicans can atone and make amends for what they have done. It's 140 Republicans in Congress, I think, including people that won off of these, quote, fake ballots like Jody Heiss in Georgia's 10th district need to do a lot of atoning for this. Gail, your thoughts? AB and Jessica just don't get it. Uh, the voters who wanted President Trump to have a second term voted for him because he's a fighter. He's a man who fights. And this is yet another example <laughs> of where they are not going to, uh, AB said that this would be politically damaging and Jessica is giving advice to her political opponent. Well, President Trump doesn't take advice from political opponents. And here's yet another example where he shows that he's going to the mat for the over 70 million voters who entrusted him to fight back. And this is yet another opportunity where he understands the radical leftist agenda that Joe Biden and his administration want to put, <laughs> particularly in the radical list of judges that they want to put on the bench who are politicians in robes and who don't want to just fairly interpret the law but want to enact a liberal wish list into policy through the courts. And so President, under, President Trump understands the stakes of this election. And the Georgia election, while it's a state election, has national implications. Mm -hmm. And it's the only way to stop gap the Biden administration from pushing through the radical agenda of DC statehood, Puerto Rico statehood, uh, court packing and abolishing the Electoral College. And I will tell you that President Trump's supporters are glad 
that he is continuing the fight. So that was Gail Trotter during a Fox News segment in which <laughs> she gets laughed at for trying to make the argument that Donald Trump can get away uh, with his criminal behavior because he's a Republican. Like <laughs> the logic that, you know, um, people are more loyal to their party uh, than the country is absurd and should be laughed at because it's dumb. It's just straight dumb. The reason why this video is kind of important is because this happened on Fox. And Donald Trump used to love Fox News because it helped get him elected. It helped defend him throughout the impeachment process. It's, it's a, a, a propaganda arm of the Republican Party. And so for him to be laughed at on air over his criminal call to the Georgia Secretary of State, that's pretty bad for Donald. He's weak. In that phone call, he was begging, pleading, trying to blackmail the Secretary of State to cheat to get the election. Just Georgia, just the state of Georgia for him. You're weak, Don, and you're getting laughed at on your own network. Pretty sad. And so he must be furious. And that's what I'm, you know, I'm concerned about is what is Donald Trump going to do over the next 16 days? Because every day he's get, he's just got to be getting more and more just obsessed and angry over this. He lost the election. His ego is bruised and battered. And Donald Trump does not cope well. So somebody's going to get hurt. Donald Trump is going to lash out, right? Like he did against Mitch McConnell and the $2,000 stimulus checks trying to just throw wrenches in there, right? Took a week of unemployment away from, from Americans by not signing the bill uh, on time, with the COVID relief bill. Like, he still has the ability to hurt Americans, and we know that he uh, is capable of doing that. I also wanted to talk about this video uh, because I'm sure people are going to, you know, be critical of those two contributors who are laughing at Trotter. Uh, look, it's a coping mechanism that we're all using. Times are so dark right now uh, that we gotta be able to laugh at this. And so, you know, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. And I and I wanna spread it because if you're trying to defend uh, this corruption, this criminal behavior, you should be laughed at because it's stupid. If you're trying to, to say that, you know, Donald Trump uh, is okay, his actions are okay with you because he's a Republican, because he's a conservative, and you're putting party over the country, like you should be laughed at because you're a joke and no one should take you seriously. So I'm curious to see, you know, what you guys have to say about this. Um, and, and what coping mechanisms do you use uh, to help that have helped get you through the last four years? And that helps kind of, you know, relieve some stress and anxiety. I'm really curious because uh, uh, we're all stressed <laughs> and anxious, <laughs> uh, especially when, when we're concerned with, oh my God, there's a psychopath in the White House and who knows what he can do with his power, right? And the time left. So help me, <laughs> give me some breathing exercises. Uh, <laughs> give me something uh, to, to help cope with this. Uh, and I'm, I'm curious to, to hear what, what you guys have to say down in the comments below.